first I'm going to um, explain a little bit more about the relation between um, signs of the coefficients here, A and B, and the behavior of solutions of a uh, second order linear homogeneous equation with the uh, with constant coefficients, right? So recall that if we have um, a second order linear homogeneous equation with constant coefficients, so it looks like to this, then we set up the corresponding characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation is an algebraic equation in R. So it is a second order algebraic equation. So it is quadratic. And uh, then we can solve the characteristic equation. So by solving the characteristic equation, we're going to get two, two roots, uh, R1 and R2. And basically, um, the, 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 these roots, they um, tell us what the solution of the differential equation is going to be. So now let me um, well explain um, so what it has to do with uh, the, the A and B being positive or negative. Right? So First of all, recall um, that we have the following basic, uh, very basic uh, theorem from secondary school. It's called Vier star formula. Um, that the product of two roots um, of a quadratic equation is, is the constant term, is B, and the sum of two roots is negative A, right? So it is. Uh, the coefficient at, at r, well, minus the coefficient at r. Um, then um, in, in this analysis, I'm going to assume that both roots are non-zero. So if one of the roots is zero, then uh, this is homework to you to figure out what's going to happen. Well, but um, if, if the roots are non-zero, it, it essentially it means that b is non-zero, right? Because the product of two numbers is zero if and only if one of them is zero. So I'm, I'm going to assume that B is not zero. Um, let me go through um, a number of cases then. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the first case, um, probably um, the kind of the, the most natural to analyze is that when we have two different roots, R1 and R2 are, are different and, and, and are real numbers. So R1, R1 does not equal to R2. And both of them are real numbers. All right. So um, then the solution uh, looks like um, some constant times e to the power r1 t plus some other constant times e to the power r2. And then essentially we have uh, the three cases. So r1 and r2, they can be both positive. One positive, one negative, and both can be negative, right? So let me um, write, uh, well, just go through the, these cases one by one. So R1 uh, can be positive, and R2 can be positive. And then um, I'm going to analyze what happens to, to the, this expression as t approaches uh, either infinity or negative infinity. So if t approaches infinity and both coefficients are positive, then here we have an exponential function with a positive uh, exponent. So imagine that it looks like e to the power t or e to the power 5t or e to the power 0 0.1t. In any case, the, the, this number here is positive. So when t approaches uh, infinity, the, this term approaches plus minus infinity. And so does the, this term, because R2 is also positive. Right? So uh, if both coefficients are positive, then what we're going to see is that all solutions, they approach positive or negative infinity uh, when t goes to positive infinity. Well, all, all solutions except for the zero solution, all non-zero solutions. But if t goes to negative infinity, then if t goes to negative infinity, then T becomes a negative number, and R1 is positive, so the, the product of a negative and positive is a um, negative number. So then we are going to have e to the raised to a negative power, and then, of course, as t goes to infinity, this, this approach is zero. Okay, so this is the analysis of the case when both uh, roots are positive. 
then it is possible that one of the roots is negative and the one the, the other root is positive okay so if um, and then let's again go through the two cases when t goes to infinity or when t goes to negative infinity so if t goes to infinity then the first term it has the negative exponent here so it's going to approach zero and the second term is going to approach well plus minus infinity depending on uh, whether c2 is positive or negative the, the second term could approach plus minus infinity and when t goes to negative infinity is the, the other way around so then the, the, this term approaches positive or negative infinity and the, this term approaches zero but uh, know that in, in most cases well unless one of the coefficients c1 or c2 is zero um, then the, the sum of zero and plus minus infinity is still plus minus infinity so which means that when the two roots have different signs then uh, almost all solutions approach uh, plus minus infinity when t goes to either positive or negative infinity and so all most all solutions they approach plus or minus infinity if t approaches both tends to plus or minus infinity okay and uh, let us now uh, go through the last case. So the last case is, is when both roots are negative. And if both roots are negative here, then th this is basically the opposite of the, the first case. So uh, if both roots are negative, then as t goes to uh, positive infinity, both components here, both terms are going to approach zero. So all solutions are going to approach zero and if t goes to negative infinity then uh, both terms here are going to approach plus minus infinity well um so a typical solution here is going to look like um, an increasing exponential function a typical solution here is going to to well to be an exponential function for both large positive and negative values of t so um, it could go well it could look like this or maybe it might could be something like this but uh, it approaches in, in infinity on both sides right and here all solutions approach zero so um, a typical solution could go like this All right, I hope this is clear, but um, my point being is that the information about uh, the signs of the two roots of the characteristic equation, whether they are positive or negative, can be extracted right from uh, the signs of A and B. So why is that? It's because, well, um, let, let's think about it. So B and A, so if B is B could be positive or negative, right? So if B is positive, or B can be negative. If B is positive, then it means that the second case is excluded because the product of two uh, of a never negative number and a positive number would be a negative number, right? So if B is positive, it means that we either have two positive uh, roots or two negative roots. If B is negative, then it means that we must have a positive and a negative root. And we are, if B is negative, then we are in this case, and we are going to see that all solutions approach plus minus infinity when T tends to plus minus infinity. But if B is positive, then either both roots are positive, and if both roots are positive, then their sum is going to be, of course, uh, also positive. But if the sum is positive, then A is minus the sum. A is going to be negative. So if A is negative and B is positive, then the, the two roots have to be uh, positive. And we are going to, to see that all solutions approach zero as T goes to negative infinity. And 
if both roots are negative, well, th th this happens when a is positive because because a is is minus the sum of the two roots. So two negative roots means that the sum is negative, so a is going to be positive. And in this case, all solutions are going to approach zero if t goes to um, to positive infinity. All right. Uh, so th th this is the full analysis for the case when um, the the roots are different and real. So let, let us now do the case when the the roots are um, are equal. So the second case is the two roots are equal. So the, the second case uh, happens if and only if these two roots r1 equals r2 equals minus b over ca. Well, we also are going to have uh, a square minus 4 uh, 4b is 0. That's the discriminant of the quadratic polynomial. Well, um, in the second case, notice that b is still the product of the two roots. So b is going to be the, this product of the two roots, but r1 equals r2, so b equals r1 squared, so it has to be positive. So th th this case is simply impossible when uh, b is, is negative. Well, but here, if it is positive, then although roots are um, are equal, the, the general solution looks like uh, e to the power um, r one t times c one plus d two t. Okay, so this this r one could be either positive. And if R1 is positive, then as T approaches infinity, this part approaches uh, infinity. And this part approaches well, plus minus infinity, depending on the designs of C1 and C2. Or if T approaches uh, negative infinity, well, if T approaches negative infinity, then it's a bit trickier. So then this part approaches zero, and this part still approaches plus or minus infinity. But this is an exponential function, and uh, this is a linear function. So an exponential function dominates the linear function. So in this case, when t approaches negative infinity, the whole thing is still going to approach zero. Well, and in the opposite case, when r2 is negative, we still are going to, sorry, when R, R1 is negative, R, well, R, R2 is same as R1, but it doesn't matter. So, in, in, in the opposite case, if T approaches positive infinity, then this whole expression is going to approach zero because, again, the exponential term dominates. And if T approaches negative infinity, then the, this whole term is going to approach plus minus infinity. So in, in other words, the, the second case, in the second case, the conclusion is exactly the same as in the first case. Uh, the only difference is that um, the, the case when b is negative is just simply impossible, right? So if b is negative, then uh, the, the roots are definitely different. They, they cannot be the, the same. Well, and the third essentially different case is when both R1 and R2 are um, conjugate complex numbers. So R1, 2 equals, I'm going to write lambda plus minus I mu. Right, so they are complex numbers. So case 3 happens 
whenever the discriminant of this quadratic equation is negative. So phase 3 happens whenever a square minus 4b is negative. Well, um, in case 3, the general solution of the differential equation is, um, or maybe let me uh, first write that uh, r1 times r2 equals lambda minus r mu times lambda plus r mu equals lambda square plus mu square positive, all right? So in case 3, b is also positive. So in case 3, uh, well, the, 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 this is impossible. So in case 3, we still need to kind of distinguish between the different situations here. So um, the general solution is going to look like e to the power lambda t times c1 cosine mu t plus c2 times sine of mu t. Right? And then uh, this part is just always oscillating. So no matter whether t goes to infinity or negative infinity, this is an oscillating part. So the interesting um, things happen uh, when lambda is either positive or negative or zero. Right? So essentially, we're going to have three different cases. So lambda is positive, and if lambda is positive, then e to the lambda t is going to approach infinity when t goes to infinity or it's going to approach zero when t goes to negative infinity. So lambda could be zero. In this case, this e to the lambda t is just one and the whole thing is oscillating. Or lambda could be negative, and in this case, e to the lambda t approaches zero as t goes to infinity, and uh, it approaches infinity as t goes to, ne to negative infinity. Yeah. Well, uh, but then, in, in, in this case, we are going to see oscillations of increasing magnitude exponentially increasing magnitude as t goes to infinity. In this case, oscillations of a constant magnitude, and in this case, oscillations of decreasing magnitude um, as t approaches infinity, and eventually here the limit is going to be zero when t goes to infinity. So here the limit of our function when t goes to negative infinity is going to be zero. Well, but the, this lambda, Note that the, this lambda is, is actually is just um, um, minus a over t. So in other words, um, the sine of lambda is opposite to the sine of a. Positive a means negative lambda. Negative a means positive lambda. So in other words, this case happens when a is negative, the second case happens when an a is zero, and the third case happens when a is positive. Okay? So summarizing all these cases, we see that the following theorem holds. So we have just proved the, the following theorem. So the theorem. is that um, suppose that we have a differential equation, uh, second order a linear homogeneous with constant coefficient, then um, we have the following behavior of solution. And so, um, oh, and suppose that B is, is not zero again, right? So then B is negative. If B is negative, well, th this happens even only if all modes 
all positions are unbounded if and only well are unbounded uh, when t when t goes to uh, positive or negative infinity so when t approaches plus minus infinity well um but if b is positive then we have the following so if b is positive then a is negative if and only if <coughs> all solutions approach zero if t goes to negative infinity a is positive if and only if all solutions approach zero if t goes to positive infinity well um a is zero if and only if solutions are oscillating uh with constant uh, magnitude So furthermore, well, uh, when all solutions approach zero, um, they can do so either, well, uh, directly or in an oscillating manner, right? And whether they oscillate is dictated by, um, by the sign of the discriminant, right? So um, oscill oscillations happen if and only if the discriminant is which is a square minus a b is negative okay so note that uh, in this case when a equals zero naturally minus four b is negative so in, in the, this this case when we have oscillating oscillations with constant magnitude i mean it is consistent with it but when a is negative and when a, a is positive we may either have oscillations or we may have a combination of exponential functions so oscillations whenever a square minus 4b is negative, combination of exponential functions whenever it is positive. But in, in, in either case, when a is negative, then all solutions approach zero when t goes to negative infinity. And when a is positive, then all solutions um, approach zero as t goes to negative infinity. All right, so that's the full analysis of uh, how behavior of solutions, asymptotic behavior of solutions, is related to uh, the sign of coefficients of the differential equations.